church history. Church history starts when? When does church history start? When did we start church history? Where did our class start? Back in eternity past. In eternity past, right back yonder, okay? In eternity past. And we got this a pointer here also. In eternity in the past. What did God do in eternity past? What did he do in eternity? Created angels and spirits. He what? Created angels and spirits. He created angels and spirits. What else did he do? We studied about the decrees of God in superlapsarian, infralapsarian, sublapsarianism, didn't we? And we, under, we, we understand a little better now how that mindset is in religion to it, don't we? Because actually it changes the person of God a little bit, doesn't it? In eternity past, what did God do? He created angels and he created spirits. What else did he do? Traitor. He what? He created the earth in eternity past, didn't he? Okay. Why did he create spirits and angels first? Brother Ray. One of the, the orders of angels, Lucifer's order, would be the caretaker of the material realm. Why did he create them before he created the earth and the heavens? Actually, he created the heavens first, didn't he? They place the earth in exactly the right part, place in the heavens. Why did he create angels and spirits first? Very good reason. Who the man? So that he'd have an audience when he created it. You know, Christine, you're going to get to go back and you're going to get to see it happen. You're going to get God is going to show you how it happened. Now, he showed them how he did it. And Satan, Lucifer, instead of saying, well, he must have said, praise Jehovah at that time, but what did he do? I want to do this too. I want to do it too. Does Satan have any creative powers? Does he have creative powers? Yes. Yes. He does. A lot of people say he doesn't have any creative powers. He does have creative powers. The dragon. The dragon, the Tanin, in the palace of Pharaoh, he created a dragon out of a staff, didn't he? And who's, who owned those two staffs? Adam. No. Oh, Janice the and others, Janice and Jambres, thank you very much. That was their staffs, and they were Balaam's children. And they threw them down, and they became, by the power of Satan, they became dragons. But God is more powerful. Is Satan eternal? Yes. Is Satan eternal? Well, okay. Is Satan no. eternal? No. No. Is God eternal? Yes. Yes. God is, a, is an eternal, self-sustaining person is he not God is Satan is a created being now he was created without flaws wasn't he but one thing that he was like we are is he was created with a juicive and cohortive that's funny isn't it brother Roger that's that's the will in Hebrew that's the term in the Hebrew grammar for the will they, they had a will they have wills. Now, without angels and spirits and mankind having wills, there could be no glorification of God in all reality if we're all robots. Could there be? He created angels and spirits before he created anything material so he would have an audience and so they could see what he was doing. I... <clears throat> used to love to go fishing and hunting. I still do. But I'm not quite as capable as I once was. But I would go up and I would see some beautiful things. I was in the White Mountains. I was all over the Greenhorn Mountains, Tahoe Ranch, uh, Breckenridge, 
many of these places alone. I was fishing on the Kern River alone. I was fishing up in the White Mountains alone. And it is not near as satisfying as being with somebody. Because you have somebody to share this with. And I go up, I've spent about three or four weeks up in Fish Lake Valley alone this last winter in the, de the deepest, hardest blizzards in the last 20 years up there. And I enjoyed it being there. I just enjoy that. I thrive in that. Do I, Marilyn? Mm -hmm. I thrive in it. But it was not as fulfilling as if Marilyn had been there or I had had somebody there with me. I loved it. I saw it. I just really enjoyed it. I took videos of it, so and I shared it with you. But it's nothing. You can't believe what the place looks like until you are there. I took pictures of those bighorn sheep. But having Marilyn with me when I saw the big horned sheep was double thrilling. Okay? Double thrilling. I caught the biggest fish in uh, Isabella Spillway about 40 years ago. And I got an award for it. I still have some of the things, the, the awards that I got for doing that. And I caught this great big silver salmon. And... They had it in the newspaper. They did all kinds of stuff. But you know what the greatest thing was? I had two of my boys with me when I did it. They saw me fight that fish with a little old pole about this long, that little ugly stick pole I got in Maryland, the one I catch all the big fish on. <laughs> I was up there in Fish Lake Valley on our creek, Chattavich Creek, and I hooked a fish three times. I fought him five, minute time, five minutes one time, five minutes another time, and 20 minutes the last time, and I got him in. And Marilyn said, let me take a picture, let me take a picture. And I like to kill him, hold him there, until she took the picture, because we couldn't get the camera working. But we got a picture of him, and she got to see that. Was that thrilling? Yeah, it was. We were over at the coast one time, out in the boat, and she wants me to get another boat one of these days. She just has to go back out in the ocean. Be a lot easier to rent one. <laughs> yeah. A lot less trouble. But I had to go out in the ocean. I went out there one time, and Dakota and Marilyn were with me. And we got out uh, by the lighthouse out there, between the lighthouse by what they call the pea patch out in that area. There's a lot of lingcod out there. And we got out there, and, and, and Marilyn threw her line, and the line went zip, pow. Dakota threw her line and, and her pole. These are heavy poles now. I should have brought one in there to show you. These are that big at the bottom and about that big at the top. These poles were bent over double. And Dakota said, Dad, this going, this fish was just going like man. That's boy, we got into the big lingcod today. Anyway, we got it out there and finally it busted her line. It went, this, the line just went like, like a bullet through cutting through the ocean waves. And then, I know how to fish. <laughs> I hooked one, except I didn't lose him. He fought just like that, didn't he, Marilyn? <coughs> and I kept letting the line out until I was, I wore him down a little bit, and I started pulling him in. And I said, Dakota, I was getting him up close to the net. To the deal, I said, Dakota, this is a big lingcod. We're going to have to have the big net. Grabbed the big net, Dakota. And she got over there to the side of the boat. And up out of this boat was a great white shark with his jaws open just like that. <laughs> Snapping his teeth like that. She said, Dad, don't bring him in the boat. Don't bring him in the boat. I said, don't worry. Don't worry, girl. I'm not bringing him in the boat. And I just let him cut the line with his teeth because it was all a 120-pound test. But he just, I fought him easy so he wouldn't break the line. But since I saw that I did not want him in the boat with me, <laughs> and besides that, you can't catch a great white shark and keep them, supposedly they're protected. These we all do for what? For why? We want to share these experiences, so God wanted to share the experience of the creation. He knew in his mind what he was going to do, because he is what? Omniscient. 
He is uh, all-powerful, and he's eternal. We are not eternal, but from the time we become a person, we are eternal from then on. From then on, we will never die, ever, 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 only physically, but not our spirit and not our soul. And our bodies will be resurrected. Even the lost people's body will be resurrected. And that's why we pray that these lost people will get saved because they're going to be an eternal, corrupt, non-dying, but in the state of death forever in hell. Now, <clears throat> in Genesis, the third chapter, we saw the what? What was his name? There, that, that snake. What was his name? Uh, Nahash. Oh, Nahash. 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 We saw Nahash. We saw him doing bad things. Because it said he became more evil, more corrupt, more deceptive than all the other creation, did he not? And what was the difference? He wasn't, was that way, but he what? became that way. He was not created that way. The snake was not created bad. He was created perfect also. So we saw him become that way. Now, let's go on down a little bit further. We're going to see um, we're going to see the faith of Adam. 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 What does Adam mean? Adam. 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 What does Adam mean? What's the root of Adam? What's the root of Adam? Blood. Blood or Dom. Dom is the root. Brother Roger, am I correct? Dom. Yeah. All right. Dom. Like that in Hebrew. Okay. Dom. It is blood. And, er, and Adam is related to the earth, is he not? Now, Adam wasn't created from the earth. He was created as the earth. Why? Because it's from the same elements that God from created. From the same elements of it. But what is the purpose of that, Brother, Rod, Brother Ray? Why did God not create him from the dirt but as the dirt? He, was he would be a secondary creation if he had created him from dirt. That chair is a secondary creation. This lamp is a secondary creation. That fireplace is a secondary creation. It was created from other things. That brick is created from clay that's been fired. Okay? Clay, made into a form, then fired, now it's a brick. Man wasn't a mud doll, and God breathed him the breathings of lives. It's breathings of lives, remember. Breathings of lives. He wasn't created as a secondary creation. But how about Isha? She was. She was. Isha. What does Isha mean? Out of man. What's the name for man in the Bible? Yes, Ish. What's Ish. What's the name for woman? Isha. Isha. What does woman mean? Out of man. Out of man. Was woman taken out of man? Yes. Now, you read in your Bible that, he, that God took a rib out of her, out of him, and made a woman. What did he do? What did God actually do? How did he create a woman? He took what? Sides. Not a rib, but sides. Rib is in your sides. How many of you got ribs? You got ribs? Feel your ribs? I got broken places all over my ribs where horses beat on me and kicked on me and everything else. I got knots on them. <laughs> <laughs> but we all have ribs, don't we? And when they saw that word side, they said, well, it's got to be rib. Not rib, because it's plural, sides. He took from Adam all of his sides that were Eve. All the sides that were Isha, he took. And he took flesh, and he took blood. And he brought her to life. And woman is what? A secondary creation of God. Why did God create woman a secondary creation of God? And why did he take woman out of man before, she, before man sinned? Brother Ray. 
Brother Roger. Well, um, so when Jesus was born, he wouldn't have to taint. Jesus could be born of a virgin. Woman cannot pass the sin nature on to the child. She was deceived. And she is a secondary creation of God. And she cre was created out of a perfect Adam at that time. Now, her blood came out of Adam before she, or before Adam sinned, so it was what kind of blood? Perfect. That perfect blood. Now, the woman does not pass the blood on to the child, does she? Even though her, her, she is infected with the blood of her father, every woman is, she does not pass that infection in the blood to the child, does she? No. Medical science proves that the virgin birth is possible. That's true, true science. Let's go on down. <clears throat> In verse number 615, we have the promise of the Antichrist and we have the promise of the Christ. Now, can the Satan have a child? Can Satan create a child? Yes. Yes. He can do that. Can angels create children if he could? Yes. yes. Fallen angels? We're going to prove that in just a little while. Okay? So let's, that's what's happened. See, Satan's going to have a child. And that child, this one special child is going to be the Antichrist. That's one he's talking about. But there are many Antichrists that have been born through him. At least spiritually through him. As you're born again of God, can you be born that way of Satan? If you reject God enough. Yeah. yeah. That's what we call sinning away our day of grace or what? The point of no return. When is it? We don't know. God's plan with man. If you read that book, you will read a lot about what I just stated there. It's many, many pages. Many, many pages. And I will put active hatred between the woman and between your seed, Satan's seed, and her seed, Jesus Christ. And he shall bruise you as to the head or a death beating blow. And you shall bruise him on the heel. You shall deal him a crippling, painful blow. And he did. Jesus Christ died for our sins on Calvary to save us. 16. And to the woman he said, I shall... Uh, greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. And you shall bring forth children. Yet your de desire shall be for your husband. And he shall rule over you. Why? Why? Secondary your secondary creation. Not only that, but she was deceived. Right. Okay. Men are not quite as deceived as, as easily as women, according to this right here. So she was not as responsible for the sin as Adam was, was she? Well, and he was the one put over the care of the garden. That's right. He and he was put over her. Yeah. And Adam was the one that blew it, not, not Eve. Eve did, yes. She's responsible. She died, didn't she? But she can't pass death on to her children. That comes from Adam. I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth and all of you women that have had children. Know that. Then to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and you have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat from it, cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it and all the days of your life. In toil, by the sweat of your nostrils, you shall eat of it. All the days you're also. Awesome. How about right now in this particular period of time? Here we are. This is it. On this map over here, this is the period of time. This is the curse and death when death began. When death began. All right, their responsibility was to do good and offer blood sacrifice. Okay. Now let's see what happens here. And, uh, and he said to him, because you listened to your wives and ate from the tree you're not supposed to and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles shall grow for you 
that's all of this stuff out here. We got stinging nettles, goat heads, sand burrs, cockle burrs, all of that. Goat heads, everything. Every time you step on one, remember Adam. <laughs> I'm telling you. Every time you have to pull a weed, remember Adam. And remember, you're cursed with that curse, too. You shall eat the plants of the field, and by the sweat of your nostrils you shall eat bread, till you go to the ground. Till you go to the ground. Till you go to the ground. What does that mean? Dead. You're going to be buried. You're going to die. And your body will degenerate, and it will turn into dust. He said, by the sweat of your nostrils you shall eat bread till you go to the ground because as it from it you were taken and dust you shall become. Dust you shall become. You shall become dust. Every person, Adam's dust is someplace. Now, now the man called his, his, the name of his wife. Now, now Isha gets a new name. She gets another name. Her name was not, was not what Adam was going to give her. Okay? What was her name? Isha. Her name was Isha. Now, in the American history here in California, the last wild Indian in California, his name was Ishi. How many of you have heard of that? He was caught. They stole all of his weapons to where he could not make a living. They raided his villages, and by the way, in the early 1900s in California, Indians were big game. They killed them. They took what they had. They were bothering, disturbing the ground. And so they had killed all of his family, and he finally was in a slaughterhouse trying to get some meat to eat because he had no way to even provide for himself. The animals had been killed. His livelihood was gone. And they caught him and they started studying him. They had him in San Francisco Museum of Natural History. And he died of tuberculosis. Because he's infected because he had no natural antibodies for all these things that we are constantly being exposed to. He said his name was Ishi. His name was Ishi. Isn't that really weird? Where did we all come from? Adam. Adam. Do you think that somehow they had knowledge of that back then? What are the ways that God reveals himself to mankind? What are the ways? The general revelation. What is it? The general revelation. General revelation. Nature. What? Nature. Nature tells us that there is a God, doesn't it? What else? Special revelation. Intuition. Intuition. Intuition tells us that we have a, a God up there somewhere, that God is there, okay? That God is there. The intuition, and then what? The Bible. So we have these three ways that we know that there's a God. Okay? So, did Ishi know there was a God? He believed in God. Why? For one thing, what was information was handed down to him. They even had the name for man right. Isn't that neat? They didn't lose that. They, lose, they might have lost a lot of their intuition about how to, you know, they didn't have a Bible. And how does God judge people? How does he judge them? By how much light they have, by what kind of light they have, how much information you have. Now it says here that, uh, now the man called his wife Eve, Hava, say Hava. Hava. That means, that comes from Haya. Haya means what, Brother Roger? Life. Life. Now, hold on. What's wrong here? She's supposed to be the mother of all dying. Isn't she, is she, is she supposed to be the mother of everybody that dies? Because all her children are going to die. But what does he call her? Why? Because they look back to Genesis 3.15 that she would be the mother of the Savior. 
They believe that. He, this is his confession of faith. Right here it is. Is the devil still working in the background? Is he making all kinds of plans? The devil's trail, we can see him. The footprints of Satan and his fingerprints are all over God's creation. You hear that? The footprints of Satan are all over. Every time you go out there and you step on a thorn, you can look back to the garden and see Nahash and Satan in that animal. He said, uh, because she was to become the mother of all living. Jesus Christ is the, the father of all of our lives. We are born again to him. Then Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us. This is a question you asked last week, Marilyn. We're going to answer that question right now. Right now. Okay? Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now, lest he stretch out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever in a fallen state. How many of you would like to live forever in a fallen state? Brother Ray, you like to live in a fallen state? I did for 30 years. Yeah, you did. <laughs> We're still fallen, though, aren't we? We're fallen. Do you want to live like this forever? I don't. The aches and the pains and the lust of the flesh and all of this stuff, you really want this forever? I don't. And then it says here, also that God had made garments to them, clothes to them, and God had clothed them. And that they were clothed from an animal that had to die and shed its blood. So some innocent had to die for their guilt, didn't it? This is a type of Jesus to come, isn't it? And verse number 23, Then the Lord God, Jehovah Elohim, sent, out, sent him out from the Garden of Eden. How many gardens of Eden were there? Two. The one that Lucifer was in and the one that Adam was in and that was the throne room. Now he has lost his seat, pristine seat of glory because he handed it over to Satan. So now the seat of glory, that throne room, now he's taken, he's been moved out of that place. He's been moved out. That's why we, we call Satan the, the king of this, this He's the God of this age. Of this yes, age. okay. Do you, are you learning something? Mm -hmm. Are you getting it a little better? Okay. Therefore the Lord sent him out of the Garden of Eden to cultivate the ground from which are from the same place that he was taken, basically. from Where did the ground come from? Where did Adama come from? ha -adama. God spoke it. God spoke it. And where did Adam have been taken? From the same elements that the earth was taken. And where did that come from? God himself. Is God... Now, his creation, is God related to his creation? Is he? He shall be way over yonder to come. Now we look back upon it. Let's go. We're going toward that direction right now. We're going, but we're studying the trail of Satan, the footprints of Satan all over God's creation, his, his hoary fingerprints all over can you feel them on you today because of the curse? Can you feel that? You know he's there. He's real, isn't he? Bad, too. And it says, Now he drove the man out at the east of the Garden of Eden, and he stationed a cherubim. A cherubim. Now, when I was over in Damascus, Syria, uh, 1975, and 76, I was over there for nine days in that ungodly, hellish, backward nation that at one time was one of the first churches of the Lord Jesus Christ was in that country. I have been in that place. I have been in that ancient church in the city of Damascus where the Apostle Paul went. Now it's all Muslim. Satan's religion. Satan's religion. His fingerprints are all over religion. And all of Satan's religion is violent. Violent. Now this cherubim. What's a cherubim look like? Schrader, you know? Uh, 
A cherubim. That's right. Cherubims are angels with wings. They have wings. <sighs> wings, uh, a bird is, is, is a owner of wings. That's what it says in Hebrew. He's an owner of wings. These cherubim are owners of wings. Satan was a cherub. We have two cherubs over the Ark of the Covenant to come, typifying something. When you come, your spark of life when your mother and your father come together and you became a living entity at that time before you were ever born, but you became an entity of life, you became a person right then, those angels witnessed to that, at least two angels. When you're born into this world, they witness that birth. When you're born again, they witness that birth. When you die, they witness your death. They carry you off to the Lord, to Abraham's bosom up until Christ. And now to heaven itself. Because where's the scripture that says that angels long to look into these things? Yes. I can't think of it right I can't now. Think of it either, but I can't think of it. Yes. The angels long to see what God is doing. They long to do it. They were they were informed, weren't they? When did God's write when did God write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? When did it happen? In eternity past. In eternity past. Why? Because he, he knew what you would do in space and time. Okay, four, chapter four, violence, Satan's trail, his footprints all over God's creation. Now the man had relationship with his wife. Simply, he said he, he was with his wife sexually. And Eve, and she can, caught seed, and she gave birth to Cain. Say Cain. Cain. And what does Cain mean? Cain. Gotten. Gotten. Now we say Cain here, but it's Cain in Hebrew. And that means gotten. And she said, I have gotten, I have Cain. And then it says, Eth Jehovah. I have gotten the Savior. I have the Savior. I have the Savior. She thought that this person that she had was the promise of Genesis 3.15. But this person was the fulfillment of her sin. This person is going to be a child of the devil in all reality. Not literally, but he shall make that choice. Remember what I said? You make two cho you're a child of God or you're a child of Satan in this world. And as you become a child of God, so, and maybe in a more slower matter, people make choices that, that they become children of Satan. And they seal their destiny. Where do we have one person in the Bible that was a child of Satan that got saved? Who was he? Paul. Paul the Apostle. He said, I was aborted. I was an abortion. Because I was headed for hell. And God aborted him. He's a special person. There are special people in the Bible. Apostle Paul was one who was another special person. Created to do a job. Judas. Who? who? God used Judas. Who was the other person that God created to do something? John, thank you, young lady. You got an A plus, 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 plus. <laughs> John the Baptist, because he was born with the Spirit of God in him, didn't want me. Okay, there we have. Now the man had a <coughs> relationship with his wife. And then it says, now she had a lot of kids. The Hebrew said, Eth Jehovah, or Eth Hadavar. That's what we say it in Hebrew, Eth Hadavar, which means Eth, he became the Word. The unspeakable name of God. That's who he'd become. That's what she thought he was Jehovah. Okay? Now we see what he really became. What he really was. And she had a lot of children. How many children can a woman have scientifically and medically? What? How many, Marilyn? 1,000. A woman is capable of having 1,000 children. If Yes, young lady, that's how many they can have. And in the millennial, they will, and at this period of time, they had them too. The earth was heavily populated by Eve. She was the mother of all living, but she was the mother of all dying too, and they said, we see this. 
right? Well, she had a lot of children. The first one to come out was Cain, and she was real happy with him because she thought this was going to be the Messiah, the Savior, the Jehovah to come. What does Jehovah mean? He shall, he shall become. Okay. When was that fulfilled? John 1.14. 1. Kaiholo goes sarks again, it was what it says. And the word, and the Jehovah flesh he became and dwelt among us. She thought it was happening right here. It wasn't happening. What she happened here was the f fruit of her sin. And Adam's sin. And again she gave birth to his brother Abel. And Abel uh, became a keeper of flocks. But Cain became a tiller of the ground. Cain was a farmer, wasn't he? We live out here in farm country. So Cain was a farmer. And Abel was a shepherd. And a cowboy. He's a cowboy. I preached a sermon up there in Fish Lake Valley at Cowboys of the Bible. Adam was a cowboy, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And uh, Abel was a cowboy. Abraham was a cowboy. Isaac was a cowboy. Jacob was a cowboy. And Psalm 23 is, Lord, our shepherd, he is a cowboy. Isn't he? Our shepherd. And she gave birth to his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of became a keeper of flocks, a cowboy, but Cain became a tiller of the ground. So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord, to Jehovah, of the fruit of the ground. What's wrong with this, Brother Ray? What's wrong with this situation that Cain brought? Was this a, was this a valid offering to God? Nope. But he was not a shepherd, a cowboy, he was a farmer. What would, she, what should he have done? Traded, Traded the fruit of the ground for an animal so he could come to God on God's terms, not man's terms. When we come to God on man's terms, that's what we call Satan's trail, false religion. We have to come to God on God's terms. Simple as that. Have to come to Him on God's terms. That's the next story. Oh, sorry. Say that real loud there, Christine, because that's what I was going to ask. Oh. What's wrong with this offering? Because he was bringing it from the He cursed brought ground. a cursed offering to God from a cursed ground. And there was no blood in it. And there was no blood in it, only sweat. Mm -hmm. And how much, how many, many tons of hay does it take to raise a sheep? Or a cow. Well, that's a big difference between sheep you and better cow. believe it. So what was he doing? He's trying to cheat the Lord. His pile of offering would be big, like from here, ten feet high or twenty feet high, all the way to the front fence, and that's minimal. A cow before you butchered a cow is two or three, four years old, or a beef. And we have goats and we have sheep and all these things. It takes a lot of grain to feed them, to get them to the time of slaughter. Of course, now they weren't eating these animals, were they, at this time? They were not eating animals. No man, if a man killed an animal, what happened? He was guilty of murder. Because animals weren't God's food. But we find out later on in the sixth chapter of Genesis where we're going later, all right, now it says, uh, so it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering uh, to the Lord. He wanted to force God to take his offering. That's what the Muslims are doing today. That's what the Catholics are doing today. That's what the, uh, the um, Mormons are doing today. The Jehovah Witnesses, they want to serve God on their terms. It's not going to work. We only have one way of salvation. That's through the blood of Jesus Christ. And what is the worst shirk you can commit in Islam? Saying that Jesus is God the Son. That is, uh, a matter of fact, in the countries where they, where they are, if you say that, you may get killed. You may get beheaded. Because that's a shirk. That's the worst sin you can commit. They say he's born of a virgin, but that he's not the Son of God. Because they want to do away, Satan wants to do away 
with your salvation, with all man's salvation. He wants them to go to hell. He desires that. And Abel, on his part, also brought of the firstlings of his flock and their fat portion, and the Lord had regard for Abel and for his offering. Because why? Abel did exactly what his father had told him to do and what Jehovah had revealed to them to do. And God had regard for Abel's offering. But for Cain and for his offering, he had no regard. And Cain became red-faced, is what it says. His nose flamed. His nose just flamed. He was red in the face. And his countenance fell. He was angry. He was a madman, so to speak. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well... Now, here's what it says in Hebrew. If you cut straight, if you cut straight, if you cut straight, and what does that mean? The word is ortho in Hebrew, I mean in the Greek language uh, translated here. If you cut straight, what does that mean? Divide correctly. If you tithe correctly. He was missing the boat, wasn't he? He's missing the boat. He said, if you cut straight, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not cut straight or do well, sin is crouching at your door like a lion, and its desire is for you. But you must overcome this desire. You must un overcome this false religious Leadings and come to me the only way. And who's speaking to him? Who's speaking to Cain? God. Jehovah himself. Here we have Jesus in his pre-incarnate form trying to deal with this man. Trying to get him to do right. And what does he do? And Cain told his brother, and Cain told Abel his brother, and it came about when they were in the field in the pasture land that Cain rose up against his Abel, his brother, and he kept on violently slaughtering him. The first man to be killed by another man. False religion always murders people. No religion that kills is of God. No religion that kills is of God. Unless God tells you to do something, you don't do it. Did God tell Cain to kill him? He told him to straighten up. And the Lord said, and Jehovah said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And of course we are, aren't we? And did he know? Yes, he did. Now, if you go into Islamic traditions, say, I know that too. They will say that a crow, a raven, went out there and started digging in the ground and showing Cain where to bury his brother. And he buried him. He buried him. Now, that isn't what happened, by the way. That isn't what happened. But that's Islamic tradition. They got all kinds of wild, wild, weird ideas, and they got some of this from the Kabbalah. And my brother's keeper, and he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's bloods. The voice of your brother's bloods is crying to me from the ground. If a man killed an animal all the way up to here, in the first part of this time over here. What did you do with the blood? You had to give it a burial and make an offering of that blood because that was sacred. The blood was sacred. Now the Jehovah Witnesses get where they won't have transfusions of blood. It's not what it's talking about here, people. They were eating blood. Eating blood back then. We'll find out the people that were eating blood pretty soon. And he said, what have you done? And the voice of your brother's bloods is crying to me from the ground. And now that you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. And when you cultivate the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. Now here we had a cursed ground. Now the cursed ground is going to be double cursed for Cain, which is a farmer. 
the works of his hands because he would not follow God the right way. It's the works of his hands are now double cursed. So what did he do? He invented slavery and enslaved his relatives. We'll find that later on. And it shall no longer yield its strength to you, and you shall be a vagrant, a wanderer in, in, on the earth. And Cain said to Jehovah, My punishment is too great to bear. Oh, isn't that something? He allowed him to live, didn't he? He didn't yeah. kill him on the spot, did he? Yeah, Which was supposed to be, he was supposed to be killed. Yeah, you kill your brother for nothing, but this is too... <laughs> this is too much? You killed him over religion? You killed him because of your false religious views? And yet this, this punishment is too great for you to bear. Now God is always gracious, isn't he? Well, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Behold, you have driven me this day from the face of the earth, and from the face I shall be hidden, and I shall be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth, and it will come about that whoever finds me shall kill me. Why? Why? Because he should have been killed. He should have been killed. But because of God's unpreventable progress and his eternal purpose, he allows this scoundrel to live. It's just like God gives a chance, even though we're killers, we're murderers, we're, we're terrible the way we are. We're terrible people. Really. We're sinners. Because we're sinners, God still offers grace to us in that we can be born again. I remember when I spoke to my uncle that was a horrible man and I told him how bad he was and that he deserved to go to hell and everything else but Jesus died for you and I want to be saved I want to go to hell and I said oh brother I was upset with God because God allowed that man to be saved but then later on I found out that my great great grand my great grandfather had prayed for his son to be saved and this was the fulfillment of those prayers so the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, a vengeance will be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord appointed a sign for Cain. Now, if you're a Mormon, the sign was that he turned him black. Okay? And that all black people are cursed. Now, in Mormonism, <laughs> in Mormonism, in Mormonism, get this. Us Indians are cursed, all right? And we were red-skinned, you know. We weren't white or anything like pearly white. We were dark and we were red-skinned. And all the black people and all the Mexican people are all cursed because they did something in a former lifetime. They believe in reincarnation. They, they're born cursed because they're bad, okay? This is Mormonism. This is false religion. This is the trail of Satan, okay? Are you enjoying some of this little bit of tidbits here from what nuts believe? <laughs> Screwballs, twisted up people. And Joseph Smith said that if these people, these black people, these Indians and everybody believe that just in a few years they will turn white and showing that their sins will be forgiven. This is real. This is his stories. Now, is that true? No. That is a trail of Satan. That's a trail of Satan. Let's go on. The Lord pointed a sign for Cain, lest anyone finding him should say him. They, okay, now, pointed a sign for him. Brother Ray, do you remember what that means? The sign of Cain. Brother Roger, you remember what it means? Crescent. Huh? Sign of the crescent. What was it? It was a covenant. It was a covenant, and he put a sign of God's signature on him so nobody would touch him. This was an oath. God swore an oath upon him so no one would kill him. It was an actual physical signature? I don't know what it was. Oh, it was a, maybe he stuck a necklace around him and said, look at this, carry this wherever you go. You know, you can't do that. Nobody can touch you. He find out he got killed later on. Somebody did kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of Jehovah, and he settled in the land of wandering. He became a nomad in the east of Eden, and he established slavery. And Cain had relationships with his wife. And have you ever somebody asked you, where did Cain get his wife? Where did Cain get his wife? 
probably sisters, cousins, or somebody. That's one of the things that people ask me, where did Cain get his wife? Where did Cain get his wife? If all these people are here, where did he get his wife? You ever heard that, Brother Ray? Yeah. Cain took his sister or somebody, and Eve was having a bunch of kids. There could have been five kids born when Cain and Abel were born at the same time. You know, triplets and quadruplets and quintuplets and all of that stuff. People do that today, you know, with this fertility drug. But Eve was capable of it all the time. One time after another, she was having children like this. Hundreds of children. <laughs> that worry you plumb out thinking about it, doesn't it? <laughs> now, you had five kids, didn't you? Uh -huh. There's a lot of work raising kids, isn't it? Yeah. It's a lot of work teaching them how to work, isn't it? <laughs> and I had twins at one time. That's yes. That's uh -huh. I know. I see two of them here, don't I? Yeah, yeah these twins. <laughs> All right. And she conceived and gave birth, and Enoch built a city. Now, they're copycat in God's names. Enoch means teacher. Built a city and called the name of the city Enoch after the name of his son. And now Enoch was born to Irad. Irad became the father of Mahajel, and Mahajel became the father of Methuselah. And Methuselah uh, became the father of Lamech. And Lamech took himself two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zillah. And Adah gave birth to Jabal, that was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. And his brother's name was Jubal. And his father was all of those who play the lyre and the pipe, in other words, a musician. And uh, as for Zilla, she gave birth to Tubal Cain and the forger of implements. Now she becomes, he becomes a blacksmith. And bronze and iron and the sister of Tubal Cain was Naam, Nama. And Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, listen to my voice. You wives of Lamech, give heed to my speech. I have killed a man. This is an outlaw. He's an outlaw. He's a murderer. I'm a murderer. I'm a murderer and I'm proud of it. For wounding me. I have murdered a man for wounding me. And a boy for striking me. He's killed at least two people, had not he? A murderer of two people. And if Cain is avenged seven whole, Lamech seventy fold. And Adam had relations with his wife again, and she gave birth to a son named Zeth, which means substitute. Now we go all the way down here. Now let's go on. What was mankind supposed to do during this period of time? Right here. Responsibly do good and offer blood sacrifice, and they did wickedness. Genesis the sixth chapter. And then we have a judgment. We're studying about the trail of Satan, false religion versus truth. What was the true religion? Do good and offer a blood sacrifice. What were they doing? Cain went over there and they began to kill people. His family were murderers. Murderers and slave owners. Let's go on now to the sixth chapter. And it became... When men began to multiply on the faces of the earth, and daughters were born to them, they had girls. Girls? How many girls do we have here? We've got one, two, three, four, five girls. Five girls. Six girls. Six girls here. Six girls in our class here. I think we're outnumbered, guys. <laughs> And uh, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful. Now, who's the sons of God here? Ben-Ehah Elohim. The angels. They're angels. Well, fallen they're, angels. They're fallen angels. But they're angels. Just the same. Genesis 3.15, can angels have relationship with women? Yes. We know that Lucifer can. Now we have more. It says sons of God more than one. More than Lucifer. And we find out that these descendants here are going to be real bad. Now, we're out of time, I guess. Are you, out of, are you ready to quit? Are you ready to quit? I don't want to, but... <laughs> <laughs> are you ready? You want to go a little bit further or not? I don't know what... I'll do what you want. Yeah. Go on a little bit further. You want to see the rest of the story? I'm not going to get that far, but we'll see here. And now we saw angels, the sons of God, and the daughters of men were beautiful. 
And they took for themselves wives, whomever they chose. Now, you can read the whole book of Enoch. If you go to the website, discovertheword.com or discovertheword.com, look over there and it'll say the book of Enoch. Read that, and it'll make your hair stand on it. And it's worse than any, uh, any kind of a scary movie. Because these dudes were bad, bad, bad people. You'll find out that this is where the vampire stories began. They were drinking blood. Now, let's see what happened. And the sons of God saw that the daughters of women were beautiful, and they took for themselves wives, whomsoever they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not drive, strive with man forever. Because he is also flesh, and nevertheless his days shall be 120 years. Now, people take this out of context. And what do they try to say? That a person is supposed to live 120 years. What is the story here? It means that that's how long that they'll give before he destroys the Okay, he's going to destroy the earth. Now, during this period of time, if you go back, you'll find out that Enoch was born, and Enoch preached for how long? How long? Years. He preached 300 years. And then it says he disappeared. Whoop. He's a type of the rapture. Okay? Which and he's gone. Saying he was no more? He was no more. <laughs> okay. That'd be cool. How would you like to have the rapture right now while we're sitting here doing this? Zip, and we're gone. No more. On the earth. Zip. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Well, that's what happened to Enoch. Enoch preached for 300 years. And he said the flood was coming. Read the book of Enoch and see what he said. The book of Enoch is quoted in the book of Jude, but it's quoted in every New Testament scripture. And even Jesus quoted Enoch. That's a very much quoted book. That was the most copied book at the Dead Sea Scrolls. The most copied book at the Dead Sea Scrolls was the book of Enoch because it's eschatology. It's talking about end times. It's talking about the end of the world and all of this. That book is full of stuff. I mean, full of information. Now, Enoch had a child, and that child's name was what? Methuselah. And Methuselah means what, Brother Roger? When he uh, dies, and it shall happen. When he dies, it shall happen. He's son of the dart. He's going to die. Now, how long did he live? 969 years. That's the longest person that anybody ever lived. Almost a 1,000 years. And all the time he was alive, now for 300 years of that life, in the beginning, Enoch preached that the flood was coming. And he named his child when he's dead, it shall come to pass. For 300 years. So how long did they have to repent? At least 969 years. And we know that Noah comes along and he grabs a baton from Enoch and God tells him to build a boat, an ark, a big raft type affair with a roof on it and everything. And how long does it take him, well, how long does he have to build this ark? 120 years. How long did he build that ark? How long did he actually build it? We don't know. But during that period of time, he was building the ark. And at the end of having the ark built, which evidently was some toward, toward the 120 years, and the only man's going to have 120 years to repent, then we find that the flood comes. The flood comes. And what's on the earth? Why does God bring the flood? Why does God bring the flood on the earth? Let's go and look. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man forever, because he also is flesh, and nevertheless his days shall be 120 years. He's going to have 120 years. And then it says the Nephilim. What's the Nephilim? The giants. The fallen ones. And... The fallen ones were on the earth in those days. And also after, when the sons of God came to the daughters of men and bore children to them, and these were the mighty men of old, men of renown, men of fame, men of outlaw behavior. They were killers. They were vampires. They ate animals and they ate men. They were cannibals. And they ate so many people and so many animals that they were depopulating the world. They were bloodthirsty. You hear the zombie stories and all this kind of junk. I mean, all this junk. This is worse than all of that because these are real. This really happened. 
And in the end times, it's going to happen again. Now, the flood brought, was brought upon the earth to kill all these creatures, these Nephilim. In, after the flood, who was one of the most famous Nephilim of all time? Goliath. Goliath. We'll look at him later when we get that far. Did you learn something, young lady? All right, did you learn something? How about, Caleb, you get something new today? Yep. Brother Ray, did I give you anything new? A few little points. A few little points. When you get this far in theology, it's hard to get one more point. <laughs> one more little nugget. Brother Roger, did you get something? Yeah, and you always uh, remind me of stuff, too. <laughs> remind you of stuff. Remind, rethink it, rethink it, rethink it, rethink it. Try to get it and teach it. The best way to rethink it is to teach it, isn't it, Brother Ray? Yes, sir. When you teach, you got to get it right. Mm -hmm. I started teaching him about election, and boy, he went crazy on election and started teaching other churches and going down there. And you learned, didn't you, Brother? Mm -hmm. I finished that yesterday. And I hope you learned something out of that, all of those that were listening about election. But here we have man now to the point where God is going to have to do something to stop the rampaging violence on the earth that Satan has caused in false religion. And we're going to see more about that false religion. And we're going to see it even carried over after the flood. We see more Nephilim and more raging violent religions. They raging violent religions. Is this, that's it. I'm not going to give you any more today. You're done. <laughs> All right, let's have a word of prayer. Go out and do something eternal. Carrie, would you just listen to some prayer, please? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for Mr. Phillips and for what he does in teaching us and Mrs. Phillips and their opening up their homes to us. I pray that you will be with us 